Hi everyone! In today's video, I'm going to be doing a binder separator decor. So unfortunately, the school season has started and that means that you have a bunch of binders, notebooks, and folders. So I thought that it would be fun to decorate my different dividers in my binder. So let's get started. Okay, so first up, I would like to apologize for the really bad quality of this video. I think something's wrong with my camera and it didn't focus on the video that I was filming. So a couple of parts of these next few scenes will be pretty blurry, but um, I'll be there and I'll explain what I'm drawing so that you guys can kind of also paint your own picture in your own head. And I would also like to apologize for the other electronic in the video. I tried to turn it on so that I could have a few ideas when I was going into it and I wouldn't just have a blank set of ideas that I was going to have to put on paper. So yeah, I would just like to apologize for those things. So I first drew kind of like an atom um, because I think that that's kind of like a big item in science and also George is going to be coming in for a few shots his tail might just suddenly appear or his head might he'll probably walk across a little bit but that's to be expected he's one of those cats that follows you around until you give him what he wants so I also added in these safety goggles because at my school you have to wear long sleeve shirts, long pants, closed toed shoes, and also safety goggles whenever we do a lab or an ex experiment. So I thought that those play a pretty big role in science and they're also really fun to draw with kind of like the different layers and yeah I really enjoyed drawing those. Okay, so once I was finished with the goggles, I started drawing beakers of like different liquids and chemicals because for, se for some reason, whenever I think of like science and chemistry, I always think of that green goo that's always in a lot of like sci-fi movies that if you touch your burn or something and it's always the like green liquid or the bright neon purple stuff that I see in beakers and I thought that it would just be really cool to draw those and I just uh, drew them. I drew kind of two in different shapes and filled them with different amounts of liquids. So also I'm going to be coloring at the end once I draw through all of the different dividers because I think that it would be kind of weird um, because I have to get on my Prisma colors and put them away, think that amount again um, every time that I finish one. So it'll be easier just at the end to do them all in one go. Okay, so now my camera finally focused and this is the end result. So it will be a little bit better once it is fully colored, but I'm really proud of it. I think that the goggles turned out really well. So now let's head on to the next page, which is going to be French. And that is my second period. So let's get started with that one. So now I'm moving on to the French folder, or the divider, I guess. Um, so I have been to France before, and I decided to incorporate a lot of the stuff that I explored there into this divider. So first up, if you can tell what I'm drawing, good job, but I I, can't, I still can't believe that I messed up a spiral. I mean, a spiral is like the easiest thing to do. So if you haven't guessed already, I am drawing escargot. So I have a really funny story about our escargot experience. So at first we were like, ew, snails, that's gross. And our mom made us try them. And we ended up fighting over the last one. They were amazing. So if you ever go to France or if you ever have the opportunity to try the escargot, I would definitely recommend it. It's so good and I would definitely eat it again. So as you can see, George's tail is in the frame. That will go away in a little bit. But I started drawing the Eiffel Tower. So I have seen the Eiffel Tower in real life 
but it's kind of hard to draw because all of the cables are like in a cool pattern and I couldn't figure out how to draw it and at the end when I did it I don't know it, it looked like a party hat on legs and that is not what the Eiffel Tower looks like the Eiffel Tower is much more majestic so I just erased that and started on a new thing Alright, so yes, I did end up erasing the Eiffel Tower, but I'm really happy with the thing that came after. So I also saw the Arc de Triomphe in, the, in Paris when I was there. So the Arc de Triomphe, uh, well, okay, George interruption everybody. So the Arc de Triomphe, it's kind of like a roundabout, which if you don't know what a roundabout is, it's basically an intersection but circular, so it's a circle with different roads branching off of it. So the Arc de Triomphe is basically in the middle and there's a huge roundabout around it. So there are, I think it said 10 car crashes in one day or four hours, I don't know, but there's a lot of car crashes there. Um, but it was so cool because there were bikers in it, there were cars, there were motorcycles, there, it, it was crazy. There were so many different vehicles in it and I can't believe that. We, we were there for like 30 minutes and there, nobody got in a crash. So I was kind of happy but kind of sad because A, nobody got hurt, but then, I don't know, I just kind of wanted to see it. So. As I finished that, I thought that would be funny to have the snail be saying bonjour, madame. So bonjour is good day, and then madame is like miss or missus. So I thought that would just be funny to have the snail saying that because my French teacher is a woman. So I, thought, I don't know, I just thought that it would be funny to have it say bonjour, madame. So when I was done with that, I decided to draw the French flag because, well, I, I don't really need to explain it. I'm obviously taking French, so a French flag will kind of fit in with it. Okay, so this is the final result of my French divider. I was really happy with it and I thought that it was really cute with the snail and the Arc de Triomphe. I thought that the French flag also looked really cool because it kind of looked like it was sticking out and I thought that it you could definitely see that it represented France. So now we're moving on to history, which is my next period. So now with this, I kind of had an idea of what I wanted to do. So I just wrote down history, which is the same thing as like geography and civics in my school. So I just wrote that down and I was so happy that the camera was pretty much in focus. And I actually took one of my containers that was circular and I just traced around it because I wanted to draw a world. So I apologize because this world, is, do not think that this is accurate. In no way, this is, this is not accurate. So I kind of drew the Americas. Um, so I did Florida and the Texan Peninsula. And then I did the Canada and kind of the little Mexico part and you could see the Gulf of Mexico. And then I also had Greenland and I drew the Africa and kind of the Portugal and Spain area. And then I also added in Iceland, the Arctic Circle kind of <laughs> down there in Antarctica. And then I started drawing, uh, what is it? I'm sorry, the Arctic. Um, but I don't know, it just kind of looks weird there. And I also drew a tree because we are learning about the branches of government this year. And I thought that a tree would be kind of funny um, because we yeah, have branches of government. Ha 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 ha. Um, and then I also saw this on a game. It's like a world with a pile of dirt and a little kind of baby sapling growing out of it. So I decided to do that. and. It was really cute. Okay, so now I was done with the history section. I thought that it was really cute and I thought that it perfectly reflected kind of what I was going to be learning about this year. And yeah, it was really cute and I would definitely do this design again. Okay, so now we can start coloring. 
So first I started to color the uh, beakers and vials of liquid. So first I went in with kind of like a, a little bit of a dark lime green and filled in the small beaker with it. And then I also took kind of like a lighter magenta and I filled in the bigger beaker with that. So at the end of this, I actually uh, outlined everything in kind of a darker shade of whatever it was colored in with. So for the magenta vial of liquid or whatever, I just went in with a darker purple that I had and same with the green, I went in with a dark green. And you'll see later that I ended up coloring the, the what are they called? I ended up calling the safety goggles um, kind of like a blue and I outlined it in a darker one. And then I also colored in the atom with kind of a purple, um, more of a lighter lilac. I don't know, I just thought that it fit and it kind of brought out some more colors in this. Okay, so this is the final science divider. It's the end result and I love it so much and I also love the bursts of color in it. Okay, so next up is the French divider. So I am taking French this year and I want to include a lot of color because I feel like France is really colorful. So for the snail, you can't really see it that much, but I went with the more sluggy part of it in kind of like a light pink. And then for the shell, I did kind of like this I don't know, I'm just gonna call it this hay so color. So people bring like um, different and it looked a little bit here, so I also and went over the, the composition where and it turned out see who really can recite color. the most digits of So at the end of that, I, I, I thought that it looked really good. It looked more like a live snail, but um, I don't know. I think that if I drew a dead snail, it, that doesn't sound that good, so I just drew a live one instead. And you can see here that it looks really good, and I, um, I don't think I showed it, but I went over it later with a darker color so that you can see that it's a snail and not like some slug under a big rock. So for the Arc de Triomphe, it was kind of hard because I don't have a pencil sharpener and some of my pencils are dull, and this silver is really streaky. So it's kind of hard to see in camera right here, but the, it, it was so many streaks and the color was so uneven. The only part that really turned out pretty good was the shading of the arch, which it's kind of known for, I guess. Um, but I don't know, it just wasn't my favorite because it was so streaky. It was like I went over it with one shade of gray and then went over it again with the next and it was not an even color but I think that the end result turned out better because I used one of my blending pencils and if you don't know what that is it's basically a pencil that I use to kind of blend all the colors together so that it's more of an even one I do it like when the color is streaky or if I just want to go over it lightly but have the color still be even so as you can see here, I'm using the blending pencil just to try and make the color a little bit even. And yes, it did make it darker, but I think that it was better so that it would cover up some of the streaks. So as you can see, I colored in the French flag with the blue, the white, and the red. The white didn't show up on a tester that I used, so I just didn't color it that way. Okay, so this is the end result for the French divider. I really like it. I think the snail is really cute and that the French flag turned out really good. The Oak Tramp, again, isn't my favorite, but I am really happy with the turnout and I think that you can definitely tell it's from France. So now I moved on to my history divider. So I think in the end this turned out to be my favorite. I think that I could really tell that it was like geography and government and that's all what we're going to learn this year. So I think that it turned out really good and that I think the drawing was also really creative too. So I colored in pretty much all of the land with the green and I did color the Antarctica green too even though that is white but as i said before the white doesn't really show up on there so it was kind of hard for me to show that it was antarctica 
and I think that it just would look okay with the green and it, it did turn out really good. So yeah, I just covered pretty much every piece of land and then I went over the ocean with some light blue. And then for the little kind of dirt and sampling on top, I just went in with a pretty dark brown and colored that in. Um, <laughs> right here, my hand was hurting so much. Like, you know, it doesn't really show up, but I'm pushing, I'm, like, I'm not pushing really hard, but I was coloring there for like 10 minutes straight just with this one thing. So, and the other ones also took like 10 minutes. So I was coloring this for 15 minutes total and you can see how dark it shows up. So yeah, my hand hurts so much. I, ha I think I have, like I don't have a blister, but, <laughs> but yeah, it's still here right now. Um, my skin still really hurts just from the constant rubbing against the pencil. So yeah, right here I'm drawing the dirt on top and then I just did the sapling with uh, like a light green and then for the tree for the branches of government it was actually kind of hard to draw because the other dark green that I was using it was pretty dull and I had to push like really hard on it and the blending pencil was a little bit dull too so yeah I gotta borrow a pencil sharpener soon so I can sharpen all my pencils and then the tree trunk was pretty good because I used yeah, pretty sharp and brown, and it turned out really good. Okay, so this was the end result for my history divider. It definitely was one of, one of my favorites. I loved all the colors in it, and I think it really showed that it was the history.